Hello folks, David here with Terrain Tronics. Over the last few months, I've had a few people post on Discord and contact me through their Facebook group about adding wiring to their 3D printed terrain that they've downloaded from Mini My Factory, purchased through a Kickstarter, or received as a Patreon reward. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can modify your downloaded STLs with zero skills, zero cost software, and zero hours of investment. Often the 3D modelers from places like loot, printed scenery and so on aren't terribly concerned about wiring, lighting or interactivity. Given the wow factor added to your tabletop game with 3D printed and painted terrain, I always felt like this was a massive missed opportunity. In addition, modifying and drilling through plastic isn't always the easiest thing to do. Modifying the STL is always easier and lower risk. Plus, if you mess it up, you can always go back to the original and print it again. For this example, I'm going to use one of the walls from printed scenery Cities of Ramshackle and Ruin Kickstarter campaign. I was too late for the Kickstarter, but their amazing open lock city foundations pack had me from the first look. If only it had LEDs. $55 of my own money later, I had the STLs. So please like, subscribe and buy LEDs for me so I can afford to do this further. Now, if you have good places to get STLs for use in your tabletop terrain, please comment below. Maybe we can influence them to start adding three millimeter channels in their bills as well. For this example, I'm going to use Tinkercad. It's a pretty basic 3D modeling tool, but as the main thing we're doing is subtracting basic shapes from the inside of STLs, we don't need much. The only quirk with Tinkercad has more to do with alignment and so on. A little practice goes a long way with simple shapes in the beginning. When you import an STL into Tinkercad, sometimes it'll contain too many vertices which will make it complain. This means that the STL is too complex for Tinkercad to handle, which usually means the too many detailed triangles that make up the shape. You can fix that by taking the STL to links.terraintronics.com slash less triangles and reducing the count below 300,000. In this example, the default 50% reduction took it to 180,000. I increased the percentage value until I got just under 300,000. I used a simpler model to get started. You can see I also imported my 3D printable lighting sconce. This sconce is available for download when you buy a product from terraintronics.com. By the way, this video is sponsored by me. In my spare time, I run Terraintronics where my maniacal focus is on helping folks like you wow their friends, family, and players by adding lights, sound, and interactivity to your tabletop gaming terrain and book. Rather than ask you for Patreon sponsorships where you mainly get more YouTube content, my request is that if you see something cool in one of my videos, come to terraintronics.com and order one. You'll get a lot more bang for your buck that way. I'm going to make a hollow cylinder as a tool to cut through the stone brick surface. But to do so, I need a straight, flat surface to align one side of the cylinder to. Otherwise, Tinkercart will start guessing which angle is flat. It's a mess. I do this by adding a box to the scene, then using the work plane tool as a flat reference, then make the box disappear. I now add a cylinder hole to the scene on the new work plane. I also shrink it to be three millimeter by three millimeter. That makes sure it's small enough to hide, but big enough to run wires through. I then align it with a sconce. We'll do the chopping through brick in just a minute. I added a tunnel from the floor up through the pillar. Using the same box trick to create a work plane roughly through the middle of the pillar, I could use the align tool if I wanted to be more accurate. I then add a whole cylinder, roughly five millimeter in diameter, then extrude it up to hit the three millimeter horizontal hole I created. I now have three objects. Now hit export and make sure it says all three objects, then it'll combine them and add the holes. I confirmed this in Microsoft 3D Builder. This whole tutorial can be done in something like 3D Builder, but Microsoft decided to obsolete this tool last week. Boo! Boo! Rubbish! Filth! Slime! Muck! Boo! 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 I printed it out on my unsponsored Bamboo Labs P1S in PLA filament. I gave it a few coats of priming spray, I took two wire up wires and snaked them through the hole and grabbed them from the other end of the hole using a pair of pliers. An LED was then wire wrapped on and a coin battery used to test that it all worked. Then I added a separate 3D printed sconce and tested it one more time. Now let's discuss the things I learned in this process. I made two different models, a pillar and a main wall. 
I made the error in not standardizing the height above the ground for the sconces. As a consequence, different models have their lamps at different heights. I think from now on, I'll be standardizing at 50 millimeters above street level. 25 millimeter bases are said to be five feet across, so that means the lights are 10 feet off the ground. I also realized that making a cutout in the walls that doesn't have flat tops doesn't really help the 3D printing. After capturing most of the content for this video, I added another cylinder across the top of the cutout that had helped the 3D slicing software when it came time to print the model. Finally, I wanted to make sure that everyone understands that there's a number of software tools that can do this stuff. Mesh Mixer, Fusion, Onshape, Microsoft 3D Builder. You aren't really doing complex modeling. The key word in most of these tools is Boolean. Doing a Boolean operation between shapes other software packages also have the ability to do hollowing actions. My advice is for hollowing out a wall, for instance, is to make sure that you have at least two times the width of your nozzle to make sure you have at least two walls between the exterior and the interior. A 0.4 millimeter nozzle on an FDM printer should be good enough to aim for at least 0.8 millimeter wall. Now let's roll the finished look. If anything you've seen here tickles your creative interest, don't forget to drop a like and a subscribe to keep up with my efforts to make the lights and sound part of your tabletop terrain. Thanks again and take care.